All right. Well, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you guys are listening from. What a great crowd we see here. Uh, thank you for being here. And um, I know that you guys have been listening to a bunch of, oh, that goes the market right there. Maybe we'll take a chance to look at the market today too as well. I know you guys have had a chance to uh, listen to multiple presenters. Um, what I'm hoping that I can do today is just share another way of looking at the market, uh, another way of analyzing the market, and just kind of go from there. So let me not waste too much time because I want us to learn something today and go with that. Um, I'm gonna start off with this. Does anybody know, by show of hands, type in a Y if you know what this candlestick signal is. Anybody knows what this candlestick signal is? It's just one of many, by the way. And one of the things I try to encourage people to do is understand how to read the candlesticks in charge because it can tell you a lot of things. There's a lot of videos on there on how to read candlesticks and stuff like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I believe a lot of people misunderstand and misuse candlesticks. And so I'm hoping that I can show you some things here today um, that would help you improve your trading. So does anybody know what this is? Nobody? Okay. All right. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And in addition, what's going on in the market right now and why I believe candlesticks are so huge. But before I do that, this is a risk disclosure statement. We're not licensed financial advisors. Please understand that. A little bit about myself, uh, been in the financial accounting investing background for over 17 years now. Uh, I focus primarily on technical analysis. And so we specialize on identifying good companies uh, at attractive prices. That's key with low, low risk and the potential for capital gains. So that is the basis of everything that we do. We want to find great companies. And the reason why we want great companies is because I don't like the idea of a stock dropping 90%, 80%, 50% overnight. And I realized that usually good companies don't do that. Very, very rarely would a good company do that. So being able to identify a good sound company is important. Um, that eliminates that risk of losing everything overnight. Okay. Um, attractive prices is important because again, I want to make sure that I'm buying at a low price. And when I say attractive prices, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, a $5 stock or 30 cent stock. Attractive prices could be a $200 stock and attractive price could be even $500 stock depending on the stock. And so the idea here is being able to buy the stock at a discount right before it starts going up. Um, there's nothing worse than buying a stock just because it's dropped in price only to see it continue dropping even further. Okay, so that's not what we mean. And so if a stock is trading at 200, dropped to 50 bucks, that doesn't necessarily make it attractive because a stock that dropped from 250 bucks could easily drop from 50 bucks down to $5, okay? So the idea is to buy it when it is ready to start heading back up. And that's what we mean by attractive prices. Fair enough. And then low risk. Uh, there's a way to tell when a trend is ready to move, which eliminates the risk of buying a stock that will keep on dropping. So if you ever heard that terminology, don't catch a fallen knife, that is really what we're trying to avoid here uh, with this low risk. We don't want to jump into stocks that still has huge, huge uh, technical data or quantitative data that says it's still going to go down. And so being able to distinguish the ones that are ready to start heading back up as opposed to the ones that are just keep on dropping is how we um, minimize our risk as well. And then the last thing is we want to know that we get into stocks that has good profit potential. And so you combine all that together and you have a winning combination. Um, and all that we do simply by understanding how to read the technical analysis on a chart. Uh, we've used that information to help us make notable calls, many, many, so much more than, than I have listed here that I can't even list all the calls. It's almost, I mean, I get people calling me the financial profit simply because we can see things based on what the charts is telling us ahead of time. Uh, not that it can predict the future, but it lets you know whether the market is bullish or whether the market is bearish, regardless of what the media is saying. And that's important to know, okay? So for that reason, in January of last year, January 2022, we saw warning signs that the, that the cryptocurrency market was going to crash. And we wrote about that. We talked about that. We even posted a video about that, which is something that we rarely do. 
we did that all ahead of time so that people can see that you can go on my YouTube channel, you'll see on January 10, 2022, we posted a video saying cryptocurrency is about to go into a massive, massive downtrend. And that's what happened. And then also the top of the market in 2022 as well. We told people, so look, this market is headed for something bearish. Don't jump in. And then uh, in October, November, we said, hey, this market is ready to start heading back up. And you'll notice that the market hasn't gone down. Now, it hasn't gone to new all-time highs yet, but it's making its way there. And But one of the biggest things is you'll see that the market hasn't gone down since October of 2022. Um, we also predicted, well, I shouldn't say predict, I hate to, I don't like using that word predicted. I like to say we saw the warning signs uh, right before the pandemic happened. And again, that's all we do is like we see signs, we see information, we see data on charts. And I hope that I can show you some of that today. Okay. Uh, when the pandemic hit the bottom in March of 2020, uh, that was something that was huge because we saw that too. And even we were shocked saying, wait a second, that, that shouldn't be because if you understand what was going on in 2020, um, the world was shut down. People were dying of COVID. Uh, nobody knew what to do. They had not even come out with a vaccination for it at that time. Um, companies were closed. Nobody could open up for business. Uh, it, it was just a very scary time. And unemployment rate was through the roof. Stimulus packages was being handed out left and right because we didn't know what to do, right? We're all trying to figure it out at the time. But in March, I mean, literally in March of 2022, we started seeing, again, the warning signs that the market was turning bullish. And that was a very hard thing for a lot of people because they didn't believe it at the time. A lot of people were skeptical because of what they saw around them, which led me to start saying from that point on that the market and the economy are two different things. They're two different parts of the same system, if that makes sense, right? Because I think the mistake people thought was, oh, the market is only going to move based on the economy. And I realized that, no, that's not the case. You know, the market can move with or without the mark, without the economy. And that's something that's very, very hard for a lot of people to understand. And so the best analogy I can use is think about your arms and your legs, right? Your legs can move without your arms. Your arms can move without your leg, but they belong to the same body, the same system, right? And when you start running, they pretty much move at the same time. But it's possible that the legs could move without the arms and it's possible that the arms can move without the leg. And that's how I see the market and the economy. And so a lot of people were focusing on the leg and not realizing that the arms was making strides or they were looking at the fact that the arm was broken, not realizing that the leg was already moving. That was what happened in 2020 during the pandemic. And then by the time people were like were opening their eyes to see what was happening, market was already at all time highs. Then it went to shift blaming, blaming greedy corporate America for making all this money and all that kind of stuff. So all I say is, at the end of the day, we can see things in charts. And anybody that tells you that's not true just simply is not educated enough to see that. Okay. So that's just some of the work that we've done. And we've done a whole lot more than that, but just some highlights of what we did. Here's a report that we usually write every week um, where we talked about the pandemic um, top right before, remember I said we saw the top. And so here's where we wrote to our subscribers at the time. You can see right here where it says the right is already in a wall. This was in January, January, 2020. Uh, we said, be ready for a slowdown at best and a reversal at worst. We didn't know how bad it was gonna get, but we knew something was gonna happen because we could see it on the charts. It says the right is already on the wall. It's time to take your profit, exit your positions. The market is warning us to take heed. Those are like strong statements that we made. Here is the same report, but now in March, when we started telling people, hey, um, similar to the bearish signals that we warned us of the bearish top, this time the market is communicating that it is time to cover all your short position, exit all your shorts and get ready for a rally. So that was in 2020. Um, here's the Bitcoin crash, the report that we wrote in 2022. Uh, January 2022, you can see the date up here, January 7, uh, January 7 to 9, that weekend, 2022. So the more we zoom out, the clearer it is becoming that Bitcoin is displaying major topping pattern. This is going to look ugly. This is not looking good. Chances are very high that Bitcoin is going to suffer for the next four to nine months. And, you know, at the time that we were writing this, a lot of people believed that Bitcoin was going to go to 100,000. And we were saying, no, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Um, 
And then, you know, people said, we didn't know what we were talking about. I said, just watch and see. And then here we are a year later, and we now all know what happened to not just Bitcoin, but a lot of major cryptocurrencies. Why is it that we saw these things? Again, it, the, the biggest advantage we have is staying away from the media, staying away from the news and focusing on data. Does that make sense? And that's all I try to do. I, I do my best to stay away from, uh, from the news simply because I want to have an objective viewpoint. I want to have an unbiased viewpoint as to what the data is showing. And I can't tell you how many times we've seen the data show one thing and the media saying something totally different. And I was like, you know what? If I had to choose who to listen to, the media or the data, I'm going with the data all day, every day. Um, this is me talking about this same thing in, in, uh, on YouTube. So you can go to this YouTube channel. You'll see that there. Uh, this is us talking about the market top, which is different from Bitcoin, uh, which is about a week later after Bitcoin. We like, wait a second. We are prepared for a bearish drop that can be significant, lasting for weeks, if not months. This warning sign is more prevalent on the NASDAQ, da, 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 but topping patterns are beginning to appear. So a week after we talked about cryptocurrencies looking ready to go down, we saw the warning signs on the market. Now you go back again and look from January to October last year, what has the market done? Gone down, okay? So again, there's information out there that we need to pay attention to. And um, I think it's very, very important to not get sidetracked by the media, so to speak, not that you shouldn't listen to the media if you want to listen to it, but understand that you have the ability and the capability to see things with your own two eyes and interpret the data the right way, okay? And that's kind of like what this is all about. So I'll give you one example, just one example, because there's so much more, but I'll give you one example of um, a pattern that you can see, uh, information that you can see that kind of tells you what is going on uh, in the market? Matter of fact, before I do that, uh, let me just show you. Well, actually, let me let me go. Let me just go with this. Okay. So this is something that we call the right side candle. You can see this right here, and I'm going to give you guys the the um, guidelines that we've created uh, in order to um, use this properly, because I think it's important to use them properly. Um, a lot of people confuse this with a bullish engulfing candle. I've heard some people even use a piercing candle, like get it all wrong. Um, but please understand what a right side candle is. Okay, now we call it right side candle based on the name of our company, Right Side, because everything we try to do is focus on what's going to happen going forward on the right side of the chart. And so we call it the right side candle. And here are the criteria that we need to see in order for us to say, yep, one, that's the right side candle, and two, here are the parameters on how to trade about it. What is it telling us? Number one, we have to have two opposing colors. And I say green and red here because green and red is what we typically use. But some of you guys have different colors. You might have black and white. You might have blue and white. You might have um, white and red. Whatever it might be, the fact is you have to have two candles side by side that are opposing colors. Does that make sense? And in this case, mine is red and green. Whatever your bearish candlestick is, which in this case is a red candle, needs to be on the left-hand side. And your bullish candle, which in this case is the green, needs to be on the right. So that's what number two is telling us here. So again, if you had a white and black, and let's say your black was bearish and your and your white was bullish, black was bearish, white was bullish, then you have your black on the left and the white on the right. So again, just understand that, please. Make sure that you understand the difference between your bullish and bearish. So I guess another way to say is like your bearish candle will be on your left-hand side and your bullish candle will be on your right. The information this is telling us is that, look, the previous trend was bearish, but now it's beginning to reverse and try to turn bullish. But it's not enough. It's just a warning sign. We need a little bit more information to clarify whether this is really going to turn around or not. And so the next thing we need to do is making sure that in order for this to be a true right side candle, we want the top of that green candle, the one on the right, to be above the top of the red. So that's where you see that line. And if you notice, I said top, um, we talked about the body. So notice that I ignored the wick up here. So I'm not looking at the wick. So when, we come, when we're talking about this right side candle, we're looking just at the body. And it says the top of the grain must be above the top of the red. Number four, 
the bottom of the green must also be above the bottom of the red. So I hope you guys get that, right? Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, but hopefully you guys get that. Top of the green, above top of the red, bottom of the green, above bottom of the red. Then we say ignore all wicks. Now, if you want to include the wicks there, that's fine, but we don't do anything with the wicks. But here's where things become important now. Number six, seven, and eight. This is where we start deciding whether or not we want to trade this based on this information. So the first thing is we've identified that we have a right side candle. That tells us that something is about to happen. Now we need to see if there's a confirmation, if there's enough information, enough data, enough follow through data that would help us. And number six says, draw a horizontal line at the top of the green candle. So should you choose to use the body or the top of the wick? That's up to you. It doesn't matter. Um, typically we'll use a body, but in this case, I just put the top of the wick, okay? Number seven, wait for the next candle and only buy if price is above the horizontal line. I should preface that and say, or I should add to that and say, what we want is the close of that candle. So it doesn't matter whether it's a one minute chart, five minute chart, a one day chart, a one weekly chart, monthly chart. We need to wait to the end of that time frame. Once that time frame is over, we want to see step number seven, which is price is literally closed above that level, that horizontal level that we drew on number six. And then the last thing is, if, if everything checks out one through seven, the last thing we need to make sure is that that number seven, the, the price, even though it closed above that horizontal line, that candle is not a red candle. And so if it is, you hold off on buying anything. And these are our eight steps just to identify a right side candle and know whether we should take that trade or we should not, okay? All candles are not created equal. Every candle has its own unique quality. That's something that we teach and show you how to see what each different candle, what they communicate. In this particular case, like I said, I'm only sharing one out of the many. Uh, in this particular case, one of the unique qualities of a right side candle and what it communicates is that a very strong bullish trend is about to begin. Okay, a very strong bullish trend is about to begin and there is a very high chance that the next swing high is going to be taken out. That's huge information to know. Okay, huge information to know. And when we see this and it met, matches everything that we're looking for, what that now communicates to us, and this is why I say I don't need the media to tell me what's going on. I see something like this and it, met, and it meets my whole eight step criteria. What that auto automatically tells me is that, wait a second, a, a, a trend is about to happen, a bullish trend is about to happen, and it can be a very strong trend. Okay, chances are we're gonna take out the previous high. Does that make sense? And that to me is key, okay? It's huge because if you understand this, then you will be able to see the difference between what people are saying out there to what is actually happening to an individual stock. And let me, let me give you an example. Uh, this is the bearish version. Uh, if you want to take a screenshot of this, that's fine, take a screenshot. It's just everything but the opposite direction, all right? That's, that's, that's all this is. Okay, uh, let me take it to the charts because I want to show you something why first I'm going to show you what's happening now, especially with all this, um, you know, financial companies, banks and all that stuff and, 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 and how they talk about we going into recession and everything, excuse me, and, and show you how, again, they can tell us one thing, but it's important to see what the chart is talking about and then we'll circle around and bring it back to the right side candle and see how that helps as well. So let me do this real quick. Let me go here to the charts. I wanna show you guys this. Can everybody see my screen, which is the um, think or swim? Please just type the Y if you see think or swim chart before I continue going. It should be a chart of, uh... okay, you see it? Excellent, thank you. All right, uh, so Steven says no. Uh, let me make sure, because I want to make sure you guys can see. It should show the, all right, so give me one second. Let me make sure that I'm sharing this the proper way. Give me one second. New share. Thank you for clarifying that. 
what about now? Do you see a think or swim chart? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Good. So, um, this is this is the uh, Silicon Valley Bank, right? So this is Silicon Valley Bank, and we all know what's happened with this. And because of what's happening with stocks like this, a lot of people are concerned of a recession. And I'm here to tell you is that I don't see a sign of recession. I'm going to show you why I don't see signs of recession. And again, why I say, you know, don't worry about listening to what the media is saying. Learn to decipher the chart data itself. I mean, you would do yourself a huge favor by understanding how to decipher the chart data itself. Very, very simply, a lot of people believe that, hey, what's happened in the banking industry happened within the last two years, uh, two months. And I want you to see this. Notice how long the stock had been suffering, right? Uh, the last two months, yes, this was what happened March, February, March, maybe April, March, April, okay? But if you look at this, can you see how the damage had already been in place and, in, and also in effect way before the media started talking about it? Where was the media when, the, when all this was beginning to happen? When this stock was at $750 and it dropped to 600 and it dropped to 500 and it dropped to 400 and it dropped to 300, we didn't hear anything from the media, but then when it goes from 300 down to you know zero, practically speaking, okay, now they want to talk about it and make it seem like, oh, it's just happening now. And so this is why I say somebody knew something about these stocks as early as November of 2022. Does that make sense? And so if we are just beginning to hear about it in the media almost a year later, so if we started in November 2022, I mean, I'm sorry, not November, uh, November 2021, let's just even go with January 2022. So if we go with January 2022, we didn't hear about this until March of 2023, a whole 12 months later, before we start hearing about this. And then they make it seem like, oh, this just happened. But that means that some people knew something about these companies almost 12 months prior. Does that make sense? And chances are they were telling us buy these stocks. I mean, they probably weren't, but I'm just saying the idea here is, it's very visual. And, and, and again, we can look at this as, as in hindsight, but there was very clear indications that we should not have been buying this or at least get out of these stocks and don't buy it until they start showing some signs that they're really ready to go higher, okay? So now that people say, hey, the recession, 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 I'm like, eh, I don't know. And again, if we look at that analogy that I gave, the recession uh, is the economy and the stock market, which is your legs and your arms. I say, what I'm seeing in the stock market is not screaming recession. The economy might be screaming a set recession. I don't know. But the stock market is not screaming recession. And I'm going to still show you this pretty soon. Here is the bank that just got gobbled up by JP Morgan Chase, right? We can see what's happened here. This is what we see. And everybody, oh, nobody saw this coming. Really? Is it really true based on what we see here that nobody saw this coming? Because if you're telling me that nobody saw this coming, then who were the people selling since November, December, January, 2022? So actually November, December of 2021, January, 2022, they were offloading these companies prior to, and again, a year prior to this happening. So again, we can look here and say, oh, it just happened in the last two months. And I'm saying, yes, we heard about it in the last two months, but some people knew, and the data was already showing that something was wrong with these companies prior to that. Let me one more. Uh, which is Signature Bank, another situation, same story. And this is why I say you don't need the media or at least learn to decipher the information. So when none of these stocks were on my radar all of last year, and for good reason, because the, the scans that I have tell, you know, I have scans that avoid stocks like this, right? And so they never even came on my radar. It wasn't even something that I even thought about. No, no, thought about or, or even gave any significant insight into. But when people started texting me and emailing me and calling me, say, hey, uh, what do you think about these companies? What do you think about what's going on? Do you think it's going to get worse? And I was like, it, 
the writing was already on the wall a long time ago. Does that make sense? A long time ago. This is what I mean by data helps us. Deciphering the data. So by the time I saw these companies going for and filing for bankruptcy, I was like, okay, I'm not surprised. People were shocked. Like, oh my goodness, who's gonna like bail them out? Blah, 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 blah. I said, it doesn't really matter. The warning was already there. And I'm glad that I had nothing to do with this. I didn't participate in any of this while it was going through this period. But to tell me that somebody didn't know is what I'm trying to help us see here. Somebody knew. They just leaked it to the media within the last two months, but they knew what was happening way before this. And they were bailing before the media caught wind of it, okay? So I'm not saying you don't have to listen to the media, but again, I'm just saying, learn to decipher the information on your own. Now, the reason why I say we're not heading for a quote unquote stock market recession as much as people want to believe that we might be heading for a recession is while all that is happening, I want you to take a look at companies that are great companies. So you remember what I said earlier, our job here at Right Side Trading is to focus on great companies, okay? Buy them at attractive prices, making sure we minimize our risk and look that they have good profit potential. When I look at Apple and anybody looking at the chart of Apple right now, would you say that this is a chart heading north or chart heading south? South mean that it's heading bearish. North mean that it's turning bullish. Okay. So in the last two months that everybody's saying, hey, financials are collapsing. So that means that the economy is going to collapse. Take a look at the chart of Apple. And what do you see Apple has been doing for the last two to four months? Wasn't going down. Apple has been going up. This is a great company. Does that make sense? Apple, by the way, is the number one company in the world. In the world. I don't even think the, uh, uh, what's that company from Saudi Arabia? Um, I keep on forgetting its name. Uh, you guys know that company from Saudi Arabia that they believe is like the richest company in the world? Uh, let's see. Um, there you go. Thank you so much. Uh, Aramco, Aram, Aramco, Aramco. Um, hopefully, hopefully I pronounced it right. But you guys can see that in the chart, Aramco, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, that company right there. Apple is even greater than that company. Because I remember when they came out with their, with their um, what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? An IPO. And they said they were like valued as the most valuable company in the world. But soon Apple surpassed them and everything. So when I look at this, I say Apple surpassed all that. And when I look at Apple, can anybody argue that Apple is heading higher as opposed to, I mean, is, can anybody say that Apple is heading lower as opposed to going higher? Hopefully not. Hopefully everybody can see very clearly, you know, this is a stock that is heading higher. And this is why, again, we say we specialize in focusing on healthy companies. Yes, it pulled back just like the rest of the market did, but to be able to buy these at attractive prices, low prices, when it's ready to start heading higher, that was the key. And we've been talking about that since October. You'll see right here, um, this was in October right here. When it first started displaying signs, it struggled for a little bit, but then here we are now, what is it doing? It is recovering. It's going higher. That's the number one company in the world. Does anybody know number two company in the world? I just showed it to you. Microsoft. Take a look at Microsoft, the number two company. Now, I don't know if it's bigger than the company in Saudi Arabia, for, but for the sake of today's session that we're doing here, I'm just going to look at all these companies I'm going to show here to you uh, as the biggest ones in the world. Okay, If not the world, definitely in America. The number two company in the world or in America, Microsoft. Take a look at this chart, see what it's been doing in the last two to four months. Can anybody tell me that this is a stock that is heading bearish? Just looking at the chart. Now I haven't even dived into the, 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 the information that the candlesticks are communicating to us. I'm just saying from a viewpoint where everybody's saying, hey, we're heading for a recession this is not what a recession stock looks like. This is what a stock that is just turning bullish, a new bullish beginning is, is, is happening and is ready to start heading higher. That's what it looks like. That is literally the blueprint of a stock ready to go higher. 
And I am willing to say right here on live recording that it's just a matter of time before Microsoft, Apple hits all-time highs, just like we saw in 2020, okay? The third biggest company, Google. Look at what Google is doing. Now, it hasn't made as much progress as Apple and, 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 uh, and, and Microsoft, but would you contend that this is a stock that is getting to do a turnaround as opposed to these companies that were just plummeting? And so when people say, oh, they're looking at companies like this, and again, most people didn't even know who Signature Bank was. Most people never even heard of, you know, First Republic Bank or whatever their name is, or Silicon Valley Bank. Most traders never even heard of those companies until the media started covering it. But everybody's heard about Microsoft. Everybody's heard about Apple. Everybody's heard about Google, right? And so to tell me that, oh, because this small little company, and, and again, I'm not trying to de be demeaning or anything like that, but in relations to what Microsoft is, in relations to what Apple is, in relations to what Google is, Silicon Valley Bank is nothing. Let's be honest, right? FRC is nothing compared to Apple, Microsoft, Google. Signature Bank is it's, it's peanuts to what these big companies are. And so what I'm saying is when everybody's saying, hey, we're heading for recession, heading for recession, look at the charts and the chart is showing something different. A chart is showing that we are doing what? Heading higher. The meaningful, the big companies are heading higher. Institutions, mutual funds, retirement funds, they invest in companies like this. Hedge funds are investing in companies like this. Warren Buffett just bought $3 billion worth of shares of Apple. You think Warren Buffett would buy 3 billion shares of Apple if he thought it was going to continue going down? No. It's pretty soon when Apple makes new all-time highs and go over, they'll say, oh, Warren Buffett's an oracle. He bought Apple when it was at its low. When did Warren Buffett buy Apple? They said the third quarter of 2022 was when he bought it. We don't know whether it was October, November, December. Go back over here, and the third quarter was somewhere around here. You think he's beginning to make money? I would say so. And this is, again, why I say it's about understanding the data. The fifth biggest company in America, and perhaps the world, is Berkshire Hathaway owned by Warren Buffett himself, right? What is this stock showing me? This is not a stock that is heading down. Now, this is even considered in most cases a financial stock. So we talked about all these financial stocks going down the drain and all that kind of stuff. Berkshire Hathaway is not. Berkshire Hathaway is making headways and going even higher. Again, the last two months, what has it been doing? Rallying higher, not lower like the weaker banks. And I call them weaker banks, again, not because I'm trying to you know, belittle them or be mean. I'm just saying, let's call a spade a spade. And what I'm seeing here is the big companies are doing well, right? It's the ones that can't make it that have fallen apart. And then they wanna make us think, oh, the whole economy is falling apart because the weaker ones are falling apart while they're distracting us from the big companies that are doing well. Give you a few more. NVIDIA, the sixth biggest company in America. Look at what it's doing. Anybody telling me that, but uh, it's heading for a bear market, I just say, you know what? You have no idea. And this is why I actually used to, I, I was writing this in my report. I said, anybody that tells you that we head in, that the stock market, I can understand the recession, but the stock market, anybody that tells you the stock market is heading for a bear market is either purposely lying to you, trying to distract you, or have no idea how to interpret the market correctly. Because when I look at all the big companies, and ladies and gentlemen, I just showed you the top five and six. I kid you not, go back and look at the top 20. Go look at the top 40 companies in America right now, and you will see that they all have the same similar pattern 
of going higher, not lower. Okay. And so when they are telling us, yes, this market is going down, please understand, learn how to read the data. Now I'm going to show you one more thing here. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Give me a second. I'll show you this. This is the report that I wrote. Can everybody see this right here? It says the right side report. Everybody see that? Just want to make sure before I go forward, just type it away. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. This is the right side report. And I want to highlight this. I, I literally just wrote this this last week. This is the S&P 500. And what I was talking about in here, it says in the chart above, the narrative based on the candlestick, which is something I enjoy doing. And I try to get people say, if you understand how to read technical data, then you can come up with the narrative of what the charts are telling you. So you don't have to wait for a report from somebody else. You can learn how to narrate the story on your own. And I said, based on the information here in the chart above the narrative based on the candlestick analysis is as follows. In October, when the market tends to hit bottom, which is based on quantitative data, okay, the SPX printed a candlestick signal that communicated the bearish downtrend of 2022 has come to an end. Isn't that powerful to know? Like, what was that? Like, what information was there? So when I was telling people in October, November, it's like, this bear market is over. We head in higher. We head in higher. It's like, one thing I knew is like, we're not going lower. And if you can look at the chart, you can see here, we haven't gone lower. Yes, we've been very volatile. But one thing is we are not going lower than where we were in October. And that's because there was clear information that says it is now over. Then I went on and said, the following month, the data confirmed that the bearish trend was indeed over. However, a bullish trend had not been established yet, which is very interesting. So we knew, okay, we're not going lower, but we also knew that there was not enough information to say, hey, we're ready for a strong bullish uptrend. And so what ended up happening was the market became choppy for months because of that. And again, this is not just in hindsight, this is like we are seeing this and we can say, hey, here's what the charts are telling us, here's what is communicating and we can read this stuff. Then I went on and said, over the next three months, the market struggled to find direction until last month when the quarter ended with new information that we outlined in April's report. So in April, I outlined that, I took a screenshot of this and said, here's some of the things that I see that is telling us the new bull market is about to kick off, okay? And that's what we wrote about in April. I said, watch, this market is not only is it not going down, but it's getting ready to start doing what? Heading higher now. What has been happening was it was going sideways for a while, but then based on what happened by the end of March and beginning of April was like, wow, market is getting ready to go higher. And if you notice, April was a positive month, I expect, May to be a positive month. I expect June to be a positive month. Not that I can predict the future, but I'm seeing what the charts are communicating. And then I said right here, the appearance of a new bullish signal last month after months of the market struggling to find direction was a huge insight into where we believe it's suggesting it's trying to go. And it's telling us that this new bullish trend is growing in strength. And so this is the reason why I'm like, I, I can't see bearish signals anywhere. The bullish signals are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I'm saying, what is this talk about a recession then? Because people are gonna be looking at this recession, be hesitant trying to jump into stocks, watching Apple go up, watching Microsoft go up, watching Nvidia go up, watching Google go up, watching all these companies go higher. And then they're gonna come back six months, nine months, a year from now and say, oh, if only we had bought in April, May of 2023. But the writing is already on the wall. Market is ready to go higher. Are we going to have volatility in between? Fed says this, brings the market down for a day or two, a week or two. But net, net, things are going higher. Now that the month of April is over, we have even more evidence and stronger data that supports and confirms the bullish signal which appeared in March. That was not a coincidence. There's also increasing proof that institutions are getting back into gobbling up shares. 
they are bullish bias and heavily involved in the market. And, we are com- and they are confidently investing in multiple companies that are literally trading at discounted prices. That is what this data tells us. So I go back here, let me go back to the chart here. And we go to the S&P 500. And I'm saying this information here is telling us we are ready to go higher. Not only that, I can zoom out into a quarterly time frame. And I want you guys to see something. This is now us bringing it back together now to the right side candle that we were talking about. If you take a look at this candlestick right here, do you know what this is right here? These two. This is based on a quarterly time frame, ladies and gentlemen. And guess what that is? You guys recall what we said about what we need to see? We need to see a green and a red candle, check. Green on the right, red on the left, check. You wanna see the top of the green above the top of the red, check. We wanna see the bottom of the green above the bottom of the red, check. Ignore the wicks for now, right? Number six, draw a horizontal line at the top of the green candle. So we go over here and we could either draw a line up here at this peak right here, we can draw a line here, or we draw a line here, which is where we really need to draw it on the body. Number seven says, if the next candle, which is this candle here, let me take this off for a second. If this candle closes above that horizontal line and it's not a red candle, see there's a green candle, this tells us something. What does it tell us? It tells us that, let's go back here. It tells us what? The unique quality that, no, right here, I'm sorry. The bullish right side candle has a unique quality of letting us know that a very strong bullish trend is about to begin, one, and two, there's a very high chance the next swing high is going to be taken out. Ladies and gentlemen, what are we seeing here? I am not seeing bearish signals. What I'm seeing is bullish signals on the bigger time frame, And if this is telling us a strong bullish trend is about to begin and the next swing high is gonna be taken out, this ladies and gentlemen is where the next swing high is. Do not be surprised that over the months to come, the market rallies to that new all time highs. This happens over and over and over again for those who understand it pays attention to it and uses it properly. You don't need the media to tell you what's going on. You can deduce what is happening by understanding how to read the data. Here's an example, 2020, 2016. Just do this real quick. Market was super bearish going down. I want you guys to see this on the right-hand side. We have no idea what's gonna take place, but guess what we have here? a right side candle. What we say is you draw your line at the top of this and expect things to do what? Take out the swing high. If that happens, boom, give it time. What you would see is that it will surpass that level. Okay, I can show you multiple, multiple examples. Here's one where market dropped pretty big. If you guys recall in, um, you know, was this 2018? Market dropped significantly. This way, this day right here was day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Christmas market was not, not, there was no trading on Christmas day. The day after Christmas, we had this. Same thing. All you had to do was draw your line. Know where it's going so we can either pick this level here or we can pick this level here. And the expectation is that we're going to take this out because that is what this particular candlestick communicates. Once you confirm that, you can see we had a green candle. It ended above that level. Guess what happens? Over time, not only did we take it out, but we surpassed that level. This is what this information tells us, okay? 
I'm beginning to run out of time, but I just want to show you again. You got to learn how to read the data. Here is the 2020 market crash during the pandemic. And this time, we had a different situation. You draw your lines. Let me draw this again. Excuse me one second. You draw your lines up there. You wait for price to close above that. Notice that the first candle, no, boom. What do we expect? In due time, we expect it to do what? Take out that level, boom. That was the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. This was the uh, March lows that I showed you at the beginning where we wrote in the report saying, hey, this market is ready to go higher. Unemployment was through the roof. The wall was shut down. People were dying of COVID. You know, people were trying to figure out what to do with work. Nobody understood anything. Financials were not doing really great. But guess who was doing really great during that time? Stay-at-home stocks, technology stocks. In hindsight, everybody then said, oh, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. But when it was happening and I was trying to beg people, something has changed. Money is flowing into the market. I don't understand why, but it is. Don't listen to the news. Follow what the data is saying. People say, nah, 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 nah. What ended up happening was that the market went up so much higher and is beginning to do that again now. I'll end with this. This is NVIDIA. One of the reasons why I was telling people buy NVIDIA, guess what we saw right here? This is a right side candle. After months of struggling, all of a sudden this happened. Now, interesting enough, this is the initial level we expected to get to. No problem. It's already surpassed that. But bigger data on bigger time frame that tells us, guess what? We're expecting it to do what? Make it to this high right here. Is there any coincidence that this keeps on going higher? Not to us. And so I say to you, learn to read the data. It's just a tool to have so that no matter what anybody says, you can go back and verify yourself. Does that make sense? Now, let me do this. Go back here to my presentation and show you some things here. Okay. If you wanna understand how to, un how to get started on the right side of really understanding candlesticks, I want to invite you to come join us this coming Tuesday at 7.30. I'm gonna go into what I consider to be the modern candlestick workshop, okay? And I say modern because there's so much stuff out there that people don't even know what to look for. Some people are studying the wrong information or learning the wrong information. There's a reason why we've been able to call tops and bottoms of market consistently over and over and over, okay? Over and over and over, we've been able to do this, right? Even this last week, we were talking about what was going to happen, played out to the T. I wish I could show, show you some of the text messages I got. People say, hey, man, you called it right on the T. And it's like, it's not even about me calling it. It's like, you guys can do the same thing too. It's not like I have anything special. I don't have a special gift. It's just that I took the time to study. I took the time to do my research. I noted down what was common occurrence and I stuck with that. And that's what I show you here in this workshop, okay? You come here on Tuesday night, we'll go into deep details. What you're gonna be able to do is understand how to identify all the right setups for candlestick signals. There's only seven of them that I encourage you to know. You don't need to even know all there is out there. If you wanna know more, that's fine. But I'm gonna show you the most seven common one that works over and over and over that I'm telling you right now, if you don't do anything else with candlestick, you need to know these seven. These seven are the only seven I use to help me pinpoint any stock, tell me which stocks to stay away from, which stocks to invest in, when to know that the bullish trend is beginning, how to tell when the bullish trend is coming to an end, and over and over and over again. I don't need anybody to help me interpret that information, okay? Because I can see it with my own two eyes and you'll be able to do the same thing too. What I didn't show you today was how to tell the fake ones. 
because you are going to have fake ones. Every good thing comes with people who try to mess it up. Same thing with the market. They're going to be fake signals. And some of you guys have probably experienced that. When you saw the fake signals, didn't know that you were dealing with a fake signal up front. To be able to tell, okay, yes, this signal looks like it's bullish, but it's a fake one, as opposed to a real one, is huge. Especially if you're the type of person that's trading options or using leverage to trade. Then understanding what are some kind of conditions where you will see these candlestick signals appear, where it's like, even if you were not paying attention to market, when certain conditions uh, uh, occur, you need to be running to your computer and say, wait a minute, I'm pretty sure there's some information on the data, on the candlesticks, on the charts, on technical analysis that's gonna tell us, yes, it's ready to do something. You can verify it and say, yep, it's time to buy. When to trade with stops, when not to trade with stops. This is something that scares a lot of people. I can confidently say, I don't have to worry about when I should put in stops, when not to put in stops, because guess what? I can see that all on the chart and say, okay, yeah, here's a strong trend. Here's when it's beginning to get weak. We need to go ahead and put in a, a, a stop. While it's strong, there's no need to put in a stop. I mean, if you want to, that's fine, but you don't need to because it's showing you that it's strong. How do you tell that this is a strong trend? How do you tell that this is a weak trend and it's time to go ahead and start placing stops? Knowing that is what we're gonna be talking about on Tuesday. How to plan your trades better. Simplest way to tell when something goes wrong. I'll be here to tell you. There are a few occasions where you know, things are going well, the feds comes out, says something, boom, knocks it over. And then people are sitting down there, okay, should I hold on, should I not? Should I hold on, should I not? Is it gonna bounce back? Is it gonna be a dead cat, dead cat bounce? They kind of like wondering, wondering, how about we can get to the point where we don't have to wonder anymore? And we can see it's like, wow, okay, this happened. Yes, there's more pain to come, get out. Or this happened, I don't see it having that much damage based on what we know it's communicating. Let's hold on and wait and see and watch how it bounces back up. And there's a very simple way to tell that, okay? And that's the kind of stuff that we're gonna be learning in this workshop on Tuesday. So you can win less, uh, win more, lose less. Here's what one person said. I just finished up watching your lessons on Monday. I have to say out of all the classes and webinars I've ever attended over the years of trading, years of trading, I never understood or grasped the concept of when I should exit a trade until now. Your lessons have changed the way I trade. Do you want to change the way you've been trading? And understand, see, the, the thing I like about this, notice that this guy didn't come out and say, oh, I made $5,000, I made $10,000. That's not what he said. He said, I never understood until now. Understanding, seeing it with your own two eyes, not me giving you trades and say, hey, buy this stock, sell this stock, but knowing for your own two eyes and your own analysis. So, yep, I see it. I see it too. Great. Okay. What if you already know about candlesticks and there's so many to follow? Like I said, I'll give you my top seven. I'll even give you my cheat sheet. So you can take that, you can put that on your wall. You can use that to help you, okay? It's good for any time frame. If you wanna trade futures, you wanna trade Forex, you wanna trade cryptocurrencies, it's all there. It's only seven, I kid you not. And then I'll show you my five personal step approach that I take before I buy any stock to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Double check my work, all that kind of stuff, right? So let me just fast forward because we run out of time now. Um, these two alone, my workshop typically works, goes for 7, 7, 746. Um, this guy, you know, I'm gonna just pass that. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'll invite you to a one month of my right side trading announcement. We do this every Monday night, we just did one last night and you get one month access to my report. All that for $299. Come join me. You get all the training that you'll ever need. I'll show you all seven candlesticks. I'll give you my cheat sheet. You'll come to my Monday night classes. You'll get my right side reports every week, right? You get all that for $2.99, okay? And I'm gonna do one thing. For those who decide to take action today, today only, right? You go there for $97, ladies and gentlemen. I'll break it down nice and for those who sign up before the day is over today, midnight tonight. If you do that, 
you get it for $97. Everything I just mentioned, David has been so great. He's posted it on the link so you can go there for $97. Come on, guys, $97. I'm in North Carolina right now. The money I spent on food alone and gas has already surpassed $97. And I'm saying for $97, you will learn to see things with your own two eyes. Never have to worry about wondering what somebody else has to say. See with your own two eyes. And then even if you choose to still listen and follow other people, no problem. But you can always go back and verify it with your own two eyes. All right. After tonight, it's going to go back to the 299. I'll give you guys that 299 up until next week, Tuesday. Come on in. It's still a big discount at 299. Trust me, because even for 300 bucks, trust me, you are saving yourself a whole lot of money by just knowing what to look for. Okay. No more guessing. No more hoping. No more wishing. It's data. Just like you read the alphabets. Just like you read the English language. You read it. It's what it says. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that. That's my promise to you. David, thank you so much for the time here. I want to be considerate of the other speakers coming in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you. Thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing you guys on the call next week, Tuesday.